couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there, Lekin Refers, I'm Asaf Levavi, and I welcome you to the third lesson in Finally Understanding Chords, the 10 Lesson Chord Theory course right here on Lekin Ref, for free, of course, as everything is over here on Lekin Ref. So we're unlocking the secrets of the guitar neck in everything that has to do with harmony. Now, uh, if you haven't watched the previous lessons, I strongly suggest you do. We're building things here uh, and um, we're relying heavily on the first lesson and on something that I showed you in the introduction, which is this table right here. It's the table of embellishments. So if you haven't watched the previous lessons, I strongly suggest you uh, go and watch them first before we move on. So uh, in this video, we're gonna discuss nines, the add nine chord, the sus two chord, sus four, and the sixth chord. So um, as usual, we're discussing the two main voicings of the chords on the guitar, the E voicing and the G voicing. So uh, taking a fifth up, it's the C voicing and the A voicing. So we're gonna concentrate in this lesson on these two shapes and then we're gonna check the other shapes like G and D and E and the rest of them. So, what are sus chords, suspended chords? Suspended chords are called suspended chords because they have no third note. The third note moves either up to the fourth note of the scale or down to the second note of the scale. That's why a sus2 chord is different from a ninth chord. The second note of the scale is also the ninth, as I explained when I broke down the table below. So why not call it sus9? Uh, it's very, very, very simple because you're moving the third note of the chord. If you're in A, there you have the major third. If you're in A minor, you have the minor third. So if you take it one fret down, you're playing the second note. So it's two, and it's suspended because now you have no third, and therefore sus two. This is neither a major nor a minor chord. And if you play it in A, it's the same second note. If you play it in A minor, it's the same second note. And now you can see why it's called suspended, because you can tell whether the chord, the basic chord, the scale itself is a major or a minor. You need the third for that. And that's why it's suspended. Now, if you take uh, the third up to the fourth note, then uh, you get sus four. Okay, so in sequence you have two, minor third, major third, fourth. Now you call this sus4 because, again, you have no third. And this chord, the sus4 chord, is kind of a tensioned chord that wants to resolve itself back to the major chord. If you play in a minor key, kind of less so. Uh, in major scales it works better as a tension chord. That's why it's a really weak tension. If you want to create more tension, play a seven and a sus four, and then you play a seven sus four chord. And uh, then you get a little bit more tension, but there's uh, a catch to that because a seven sus four actually sounds really, really pleasant. It doesn't have the seventh tritone in there. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes you play this, 7 sus 4 to 7. But we're not discussing uh, music theory and composition here, we're talking about chords. So let's go back to uh, chord theory. Now, hopefully you now understand why the suspended chords are called suspended. But you'll understand it better when we talk about the add 9 chord. The add 9 chord is when you take this note, the ninth of the A chord, okay? It's the open, um, the open second string, it's the 2 of the scale, and an octave above it, it's the 9. So if you take it here, 4 on the 3rd string, which is the same note, if you add it to an A chord, then you get this, a really beautiful chord. 
why is that? Because you have eight flat nine nine. Okay, so now if you didn't understand what I said about eight, that's because you haven't watched the previous lessons. So go watch lesson one, okay, and everything will be clear. So eight flat nine nine, and we add the ninth to the chord. And we have both the two and the three. Okay, but we won't call it a two chord because it's an octave above the one. Okay, we have the root, we have the octave above, and we have the ninth. And that's why we call it add nine. Okay, the two, the technical two, would be here. Okay, and we won't. And this is a completely different chord which we'll discuss later on in the series. So, um, okay, this is. A add nine. This, by the way, was A over B, but it's also a different chord if you start by B. So um, just wait, have patience. Add nine, and uh, that's the difference between sus two and add nine. Now you also have add eleven chords, but that's more towards the more complex chords. So we'll uh, discuss that later. And why I'm saying eleven? Look at the table below. 4 is 11. Okay, if 2 is 9, 4 is 11, 6 is 13. Okay, the octave above it. So uh, if we add 4 to a chord that has the third, then it's add 11. But we'll discuss that when we discuss more complicated chords. Right now, we're talking about basic chord structure. So how do we apply it to more chords? Let's stay in the uh, A family. So we have E and D, which is the same uh, family because they have the same voicing. Again, lesson number one in the series. So it's the same thing. We have eight, so flat nine, nine. And we have E add nine. Or E minor add nine. They also a beautiful chord. Also this, which is A minor add nine. Yeah, you probably heard it before. Um, there are other ways to play A minor at 9, but again, we'll leave it to the uh, more complex chord lessons. What about D? We have D, this is 8, flat 9, 9. So, this is D, at 9. So that's about this family. Now in E, we also have 8, here. So um, we can add 9 here, okay? Because 8, flat 9, 9. And we can here. And there you go, another beautiful chord. Or minor add 9, okay? Which uh, is a really, really special chord. And you can also add 7 when you take the finger off of the fourth string. Okay. Now, this is dirty because we have a lot of bass notes, but if we play it here, it's a really, really good chord. Um, but I kind of broke my own rule not to jump ahead to barred chords. Uh, so much about rules. So, um, what about the G, C, and F family? Okay. In, um, in G, Let's, let's wait with G. Uh, in C, the primary chord shape that we use to build more complex lessons, the 9 is here because we have this. Remember, 1, 3, 5, 8. So, 8 flat 9, 9. And you've probably seen this chord everywhere. It's C at 9. And uh, if you watched the previous lesson, now you can understand a complex chord. Now you can understand the jazz ninth chord. And uh, the jazz ninth chord is what we call nine. A nine chord also has the seventh in it. So if we have C, we have the seventh here on three on the third string, and we have the ninth here on uh, three on the second string. So added together, we get a ninth chord. And you call it uh, dominant 9 because it has 7, but in short you call it 9. So that's the difference between 9 and add 9. Add 9 <clears throat> sorry, is a normal chord with the 9th added to it. A 9 chord is a dominant 9th chord. It has 
the seven and the nine. Now, uh, if you want C minor add nine, then you take C add nine, and you take the third down to minor third. And you get minor add nine, C minor add nine. Or C minor nine if you add the seven. taste of a little more complex harmony. So what about the six? The six is, um, again, it's kind of the same thing. You take the chord and you add the sixth note. So in the A, E, and D family, you have the five here in A. The open E string is the five. So five, sharp five, six. So this is A six. And, uh, 13 is when you take uh, 6 and uh, add a 7th to it. And if you add a 6 to A7, it becomes a 13 chord because it's a dominant 13. And it's a jazz chord. So, a little bit more complex. That's when you stack embellishments up. You can also add the 9th to it here with the open 2nd string. Okay, and then you really have a stack of embellishments. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Uh, I just wanted to show A6. It's the same thing with E. Okay, it's on the second string. It's uh, five, sharp five, and six. You also have six here, okay? But uh, nobody really plays it here. Okay, you can. But this gives it a C sharp minor, um, not minor seven, a C sharp minor sound. Okay, uh, so um, you rarely use the sixths in the bass notes unless you do it in a, a, a high position. For example, in A, the sixth would be here because this is five. So five sharp five six. Okay, this is A six as well. But you can play the six here too. But now it sounds like F sharp minor. So uh, you see, you can you can play with embellishments to a limit. Um, but what about C? In C, we have the five on the third string. So five sharp five six. So it's this. It looks like A minor over C. It's A minor over C, but it's technically correct to call it C six. bit better as a sixth chord. Now um, when you start stacking the embellishments up, for example, if we add a ninth to this, then we get this or this because we have one, three, six, nine. And then we start getting uh, again to complex harmonies. So um, when you talk about the G shape, it's a little bit problematic uh, because again, there are um, problems in doing this in barred form. So usually you just uh, think of the barred form as A because you have the A shape here. We'll discuss that when we reach the caged method lessons. So in G, we can just use the basic shape. We can't really move it around, but if we want, uh, if we want us four, we have it here, okay? the first fret on the second string okay because we have the major third on the second string okay remember one three five one three one so three major third goes up to four okay but now we find something really interesting this is not really sus four unless you don't play the fifth string because we have the third here and that makes it an add 11 chord. And this is why talking about the G shape gets us into a lot of trouble. But we'll keep on going. Um, the ninth is here, okay? Because we have the eight on the third string. So A flat nine, nine, and we have add nine, two on the third string, or like this. And, um, 
I'll stop here because I don't want to get into really complex shapes that get us nowhere because uh, we can find them later on in the series. So um, that's it about the suspended chords and the difference between suspended and add nine and where to find them. And I really hope that by now, if you've been following all previous four lessons, including the, um, the introduction, all previous three lessons, I should say, this is the fourth, uh, including the introduction, then you're starting to see that you can find the notes on your own if you remember the basic shape. So starting from the next lesson, we're going to discuss more uh, complex shapes like the augmented chord, the diminished chord, and the diminished 7 chord, and also the minor 7 flat 5, which is half diminished. But I don't want to scare you, just uh, go to the next lesson and uh, watch it and see for yourself that it isn't as scary as you think. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching and have fun. Bye for now.